So I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and he said something that really got me thinking. He asked me a question about the Supreme Court cases on the issue of corruption, and I broke it down for him about the recent cases, Citizens United and McCutcheon, and touched briefly on the cases from the late 1970s and how basically the Supreme Court has dismantled campaign finance laws from the late 1970s and onward. And I basically said that, yeah, that's the main problem in U.S. politics, and we need to reverse those decisions in order to get our democracy back. So he responded by saying, yeah, anti-establishment. And he didn't, he didn't mean it with a negative connotation, like, yeah, that's an anti-establishment view. No, he meant it in a positive way, like, yeah, that's an anti-establishment view, and good, I'm for it, basically. So, I was thinking about it, and I was dwelling on it, and it hit me that that's really not true. So it depends who you talk to, but if you were to ask people, like if they're familiar with the show, for example, and they know my politics, and then you were to talk to them and you were to ask them, well, do you view Kyle as anti-establishment or pro-establishment? It really depends who you ask. There are some people who would say, well, he's obviously anti-establishment. Look at uh, what he says and compare it to where the political spectrum is in the U.S. And then there's other people that you could ask, and they would argue, well, no, he's more pro-establishment. Go talk to somebody from Scandinavia, and they'll tell you I'm pro-establishment. Go talk to, uh, like, one of my political science uh, professors back when I was in college used to tell me that I'm very moderate and I'm pro-establishment. So it depends who you ask. And I realize that by any reasonable understanding and interpretation of world politics and the world political spectrum. I'm actually pro-establishment. So let me explain what I mean by that. Again, if you talk to somebody in U.S. politics, they'd say, oh my god, that crazy, loony, left-wing, insane person. Yeah, there's no way that that guy's pro-establishment. But here's what I mean by that. Let's paint a fake scenario. Let's say there's a revolution going on in the United States, and people are just fucking tired of the fact that our government does not represent us in any way, shape, or form, and they only do the bidding of the rich. So people are out in the streets, and they're rioting and burning down buildings, and they're fucking pissed off, and they've had enough, and they're ready to overthrow the government, okay? And I know this is a fake scenario. I know that in that situation, they probably start gunning us down with machine guns, but bear with me here for a second. If I was representing the movement of people who were trying to do that, trying to overthrow the government, and they had me in a room with whoever the president is at the time, I would say to them the same thing that Nelson Mandela said to the apartheid government in South Africa when Nelson Mandela said, you could either deal with those guys who are, you know, vandalizing property and fucking shit up and breaking windows and are ready to hurt your ass, or you could deal with me, who is a real moderate, who, uh, you know, I will, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and totally trash every aspect of the system we have, I'm going to incorporate the good ideas and throw out the bad ideas. So that's what a true moderate is, and a true centrist is, and a true independent is. It's somebody who doesn't try to reinvent the wheel, but just takes the good ideas of the society and keeps them and gets rid of the bad ideas of the society. And I was just debating this earlier today on Twitter. I have a lot of people who listen to the show. I love all you guys, but... I'll be honest, a lot of you guys are way to the left of me. Like, there's some people who listen to the show and they would consider themselves communists. Okay, I'm definitely not a communist. There are a lot of people who listen to the show, they probably consider themselves socialists. Well, I'm not really a socialist either because it depends on what definition of socialism you use. But even by the most conservative definition of socialism, I'm really not a socialist. So I would describe my politics as social democratic. And what a social democracy is... That's not even the, th the same thing as a democratic socialist, which is also to the left of what I'm talking about. What I'm in favor of is, look at Scandinavia. Look at the system they set up in Scandinavia. 
Now, you might say this is too conservative of a, a, a feeling of mine, but I'm not so sure that that's not the best we could do as human beings. You know, maybe I'm not idealistic enough uh, or what have you, but that may be as good as it gets. It may be as good as it gets that we set up a system that is essentially efficiently regulated capitalism with a healthy dose of socialism uh, to balance it out. So you have another term for this, by the way, is welfare statism or a, a liberalized version of capitalism where you have free markets, you have private ownership, but you also have, you know, government uh, schools. So taxpayer funded universal schooling, all universal education, universal health care, universal daycare. You have an infrastructure set up that actually works and you continue to give it to Keep that infrastructure up to date and running properly. You have a system that privatizes where it should be privatized and makes everything public where it should be public. So, for example, if you ask me, well, who do you want to build your really comfy mattress for you? I say there's no way I want the government building mattresses. I need a private... I need a, a business, a private business to do that. And they try to make the best mattress and sell it for the lowest price. If you ask me, who do you want to make video games? I'm going to tell you a private company. There's a thousand and one areas, clothing, cars. These are areas that should be private. They should be capitalist, okay? And then there's areas that sh clearly should be public and should be government. And capitalism should go nowhere near it. The best example of that is prisons. Uh, the best example of that is cops, the military, and healthcare. To have a profit motive involved with people's health is fucking crazy. But this is what I mean when I say I'm actually pro-establishment, because if the system is running properly, well, then I would support the established system, and I would be pro-establishment, and I would be a conservative in that uh, under that system, where I say, don't change anything, because we got a good fucking system going here. We got a good deal going here. Whereas the, there are plenty of people to the left of me who don't want a very liberalized version of capitalism and a social democracy. They want more than that. They want, uh, you know, 100% um, owning of the means of production by the public. So everything, everything in society is owned equally by everybody. Everything. Okay, and every business is uh, communal by their nature. And every business involves a democratic vote at that business. And every single decision has to do with that. All worker-owned cooperatives. Not, hey, some worker-owned cooperatives if they want it, and others not. No, everything is a worker-owned cooperative, and it goes even further with some people where they say, no, the state owns absolutely everything. And then people get into weird arguments about how, but then if the state really does own everything, does the state even really exist? It doesn't even really exist because it dissolves under that system. And that's when we start getting into pure communist-type societies where they talk about from each according to his ability to each according to his need. And some people even say at that point, money goes away. I don't believe in that, man. I think it's too utopian. I don't think it's possible. I don't think the incentive structure is right. Even like the Zeitgeist people. I love them. I think their heart's in the right place. But I think it's a pseudo-religious movement where people are denying what's in human nature. Look, you can try to deny it all you want, but there's something about human beings in many areas that is competitive. Now, we're not purely competitive, and we're not. it's not purely a dog-eat-dog -dog world, but it's certainly part of it. Human beings are both good and collective uh, by their nature and nice to each other and willing to compromise. That's in our nature for sure. But then there's also the aspect of, you know, we want to conquer you. We want to destroy you. We want to win. I mean, if you ever looked at any sporting event, you see that clearly that people are fighting for this system of dominance. It's in our evolutionary spirit. So you need to have a system that harnesses both of those things. And that's why I think... Uh, a social democracy is the best answer. And by the way, to be clear, I'm not 100% in favor of everything that social democratic parties advocate for. On social issues, I'm actually more libertarian, where I'm more in favor of freedom, hey, do whatever drugs you want, yada yada. But it's the closest system to what I believe in. And that's what I mean when I say I'm pro-establishment under the right circumstances. So to bring it full circle and go back to this example of this fake revolution in the U.S., what I would say to those people in, the, in that room, what I would say to the president at the time in the room, if everybody out in the street is breaking shit and ready to crack skulls, I would say to them, you could deal with me or you could deal with them. Under my system, there's still aspects of capitalism involved. There's still aspects of private ownership involved. We're not going to 
it, totally nationalize every single thing in society. So this is the true moderate position. You deal with me or you deal with them. A lot of them are going to want to, you know, make everything collective, and a lot of them are going to have solutions that are anarchistic or communistic or even socialistic. I'm not going to do any of that. There's going to be remnants of capitalism, but there's also going to be a healthy dose of socialism and uh, government where it's necessary. So that's a true moderate, and that's why I often refer to myself as an international centrist, uh, an international moderate, and an international independent, because that's where I think I truly am uh, on the political spectrum, not this stupid U.S.-centric view where it's um, there's some crazy loony as far left as you could possibly get because the right the spectrum in the U.S. is so far right wing and fucked up.